Praise God. Praise God. I pray that you are all having a blessed day. I'm going to wait till you guys get on here. Praise God. Praise God. Give him glory, 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 glory. He is worthy to be praised. Okay, I'm going to wait till a couple of more of you get on here. Yep. All right, that's enough. Um, so, praise God, praise God. Nice to see you guys again. Um, how? I, and I know y'all see is a sense of urgency in, in my face and in my spirit. Okay, so I'm gonna have to go straight to it because we don't have time to play. That's the problem. The church been playing. The church been sleeping. The church been wanting to. And I have to say it how God said it this morning. The church been wanting to do all this and that and not doing what we're supposed to do. I'm telling you what's happening here. My heart goes out to all the families and everything with every major shooting. But this is not just happening. Y'all can get mad, say what you want. I really don't care. I'm going to say what God said to say. Y'all know that. They need that gun law to drop. I'm going to say it again. They need that gun law to drop. I'm going to say it one more time. They need the gun law to drop. Once that gun law drop, <laughs> everything else is going to come in play. I told y'all on the video, I think it was Saturday. I sent it was Saturday. Long story short, what's happening is that Things are being positioned into play. They have a time frame and they almost finish. I must hit again. They almost finish. And while the church, and I have to say it how God says it, judgment is in the house of God. Judgment is in the house of God. Judgment is in the house of God. Why prophet is because we're doing everything, but we're supposed to be doing everybody trying to get rich. Everybody trying to get famous. Does it even matter once this world ends? Because guess what? It's about your soul. The fight is for your soul. The fight is for your soul. Everybody don't want to hear that because most people have conformed to the world doing what the world do, how the world say, and all these things make people emotion right now. God, God is not, I have to say it like it is. God is not worried about your emotions. God is trying to get us to a point to where we can see the power of God must manifest in this earth like never before. It's not happening because people are not holy, because people are not pure, because people are not real. You heard me. Everybody want to play this game. In a minute, it won't be a game because they are bolder than ever before. The early church, they had it right. It was always, they was always trying to kill some prophet, some teacher, some preacher, even Jesus, because they were on their job 24 seven. They didn't let up. They, I mean, there was like a pump bill. That's what we're supposed to be like in this hour. Everybody's digressing because I, I, I don't want to be talked about. I, I don't want to be looked at differently. I don't, I'm so used to it. I really don't care what nobody says, especially after what I just been through. Yeah, I have been proven. Hallelujah. I've been proven. I'm ready to never. That's it, it, all that. Let me tell you something. I can look at the situation or I can look at the assignment. The assignment was, I need you stronger. I'm talking about myself. I, I, I need you piercing. There's a certain sense of urgency that is needed in this hour that has not been. This is not the time to try to be rich. This is not the time to try to be famous. I'm just being real. Some of you are not going to like it. It's real because you know how it is. This is about the war of souls. The enemy is killing people. You can't see. Revelation is here. The book of Revelation is here. Mother against daughter. Father against son. I guess that last one, um, what happened in South Carolina four weeks ago when the 44-year-old guy killed his mother and his daughter. Are you not, are you not seeing what's happening here? That's, that's, that just didn't happen. That's demonic. Okay, let me explain what demonic. Something got into this man's mind, spirit, soul. No one just does that. You can say what you want. No one does. I, I'm reminded of the, the young man that was tied up by the tomb. And he said, he's gone mad. And Jesus said, no, he's possessed. So Jesus said, what is thy name? He said, I am legion for we are many. Hello. <laughs> they ain't ready, Lord. They ain't ready. And that's the problem. This is going to be a season of hardness, not just for myself as it has been, 
But for everybody that's real, because God said, I, 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 need, I need to crush you because I, I, I need that R coming out. I, I, I need the power of God. And we need the power of God. Books is not going to do it. Conferences is not going to do it. Speaking and engagement is not going to do it. Y'all ain't ready for me. The only way God says this kind come out but by prayer and fasting, which you have not done. <laughs> The power of God is needed in this hour. That is the only way we can combat everything that's happening. You can get on Facebook, talk about it, preach about it. It is time to live it, God says. It is time to possess the pure power of God. How do you do that? I'm glad you asked. You cannot partake in the unclean things. What are the unclean things? I'm just going to, you know, I got to keep it 100. Watch who you're around. Is anyone taking your spirit? What are you connected to? Who are you connected to in this hour? Because to be honest with you, it, it's, it's the little foxes and it's the, a little leaving that takes the whole thing, the whole person. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. And so all these things are happening and, and the church is just like, and, and I'm a girl that's trying to conform. They don't want to say too much. Don't want to do too much. Well, I, I, I'm about to go here. They should have never played with me. It opened up something that I think God been trying to unlock in me in a long time. A different type of courage. A different type of talk. Meaning that all of us operate, and, and I have to be very transparent. All of us operate in a certain amount of fear. Mm -hmm. You can lie all you want. I don't want to say this. I don't want to do this. I don't want to go here. I don't want to. After what just happened to me. I'm not afraid of anything anymore, not even a little bit. If you're going to bring it, you better bring it. Because now that I know that God is truly, I've always known. But when you know that you know that you know that you know that you know, and you go through what I've been through, hallelujah, you know God's really real. And oh, it reminded me of Joseph. It reminded me of everything in the Bible that people went through. I said, okay, I get it. It wasn't that I did anything because I didn't. It was what he was trying to push out of me. And push me in two. And push me in front of. Hallelujah. I feel the power of God. Ho, ho, ho. He says, Romans 8, 28. The good and the bad works together for the, those that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. This is the time to stand boldly, said the Lord. Thus said the Lord, this is the time for my people to rise. The remnant must rise. The remnant must, you, you, you put your sword in your hand and in your heart. It is time to be who God has called you to be in every capacity. And, and, and when I say everybody operates with a little fear, if I become this, will I lose that? If I become this, will, yes. As you're becoming who God have called you to be, ordained you to be, sustained you to be, it's going to cause you everything. And I do mean everything. <laughs> because God wants to know, Matthew 6, 33, is it me you really want? Or is it what's in my hand? Or is it just blessings, money, honey, and funny? Or are you really trying to serve me and my people? That's what this is all about. This is not about a house, a car, being a superstar. And I know you think it, and most people want it to be that way. It is about the glory of God, the power of God, and the salvation of God's people. Because people out there need us. And you know what's happening? I'm going to tell you what's happening. We are not doing our job. We're not going to the highways and byways. You know, when I figured that out, when I looked around, y'all, let me tell y'all what happened. I was in two nice girls, I, I, I thought, and I'm just being real. And they were still nice, but I'm about to tell you something. So when they told me that this one was in for murder and this one was in for murder, I'm not going to lie to you. I kind of looked to the left. I know they saw that. I, yeah, I was kind of like, oh, my God. And then God said, Deanna, look deeper in their spirit. They may have committed this. They may have committed that. That means they need it saved. That means they need to be healed. That means they need to be delivered. You didn't hear what I just said. We are not going to the highways and byways because you're scared. Oh, look at them. Oh, they did that. Oh, they've been there. 
total transparency. That's what God wants. When I first went there in jail, I ain't, I ain't scared. I felt, I don't belong here. I'm too, look at, the bed is by the toilet. Oh, me. And I got humble real quick. I got gully all over again. I said, this is what you want? That's why you saved me? You saved that Deanna that had that strength. You say, that's the Deanna you need. You don't need me being all arrogant and ooh, ooh, ooh. You don't play with me because most of y'all are. <clears throat> when you go through something, it'll humble you. Because now I'm looking at not a person that killed somebody. I'm looking at a sister. What happened? Who hurt you? When, because we tend to judge, y'all know it, look at them, look at they, that's your sister and your brother, and you don't know what the situation was, is, <laughs> what am I saying, we've gotten too judgmental, good thing Jesus is not like that, because Jesus, he'll pull that on your back, and let you know what's really going on, because truth be told, we all got something. Your something may not be my something, but it's something. It reminded me of preaching for real, how I started off being gully. Not, you know, you know, being, you know, you know, you know, you know don't go certain places, don't do certain things. But when you get in a situation like that, you, you're not even worried about that. You're worried about their soul. I saw people that were lost for real. I, I, I went through something, but the, the, they still going through. I was like, God, oh, this, this, it changed my life. I can't lie to you. That situation changed my life. I can never go back to being that old Deanna that y'all knew two months ago, three months ago, four months ago. It's over. She did. Because he, he awakened something in me that I didn't even know I had. Worried about what people think, what people feel, who could help you, who won't. I don't care about none of that. I don't care if y'all turn your back on me. Hallelujah! You don't hear what I just said, and I still love you. He, 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 he brought me to a self-love, a, a, a love of God, a love of his people. Because that's the foundation. And if you don't have that foundation, you are not a child of God. I don't care how many degrees, PhDs, whatever you have. I really don't care. If you don't have love in your heart for your brother and sister that's dying out there, then what we doing? Who are we for real? Or is it just about a church? Because my understanding is we're the church. My understanding is we're supposed to we're supposed to minister. We're supposed to go to highways and byways. <laughs> Some just stay in the church. Not understanding that the church gotta gotta get out these four walls. People are dying without God. Let me say it again. People are dying without God. Let me say it one more time. People are dying without God. And we worrying about a building, some money, social media accounts, followers. <laughs> yeah, I say it like I'm saying it. My God, what these people are getting ready to do, if you're not prepared, I got to go back to the vision I saw when I was in California, and this was in, oh, Lord, what year was that? I think, if I'm not sure, it was 2009. Let me tell y'all that prophecy again. Martial law had started. People were literally blowing their brains out, committing suicide, because they could not take what was happening. I remember that day I, I couldn't eat, sleep for the rest of the night. It, it, the, the vision was so real. I was like, God, you say, be prepared. Tell them to prepare their hearts. Tell them to strengthen their hearts. Tell them to prepare for war. We acting like it's not a war. You have a known enemy. He don't love you. He's trying to kill you. The Bible says he's trying to still kill and destroy. Not necessarily in that order. Because sometimes he goes straight for the... Let me say something. The enemy was not just trying to put me in jail. Okay? The enemy was trying to kill me. That first girl, whoever she really was, because she was not a prisoner. And I, and I gathered that because 
Okay, so they put you by twos to go into a cell. She, I saw her when she pushed her way up by me. I peeped it. I said, okay, this is orchestrated. So despite of what I was feeling, I had to use my wisdom and discernment. So I already peeped game. Even I peeped game when we was getting booked. She peered out of nowhere by me. I'm like, I right, went to the phone, come back. So I already peeped game. I said, this, who is this? Who is this girl? Long story short, we in the cell. She told me three things about myself she couldn't have known, even what's going on with my right eye. I haven't even told my family. How you know that? <laughs> yeah, I'm telling y'all stuff on purpose. Hold on. Stop asking me weird questions. I said, okay. She's not an inmate. She's a plant. They put her in there. So when she couldn't get anything out of me, she tried to fight me. So I'm going to tell y'all what happened. I, oh, yeah. I'm going to tell y'all a little bit that's going to go in the book because this was, this was crazy. So one morning, she just got up, started cursing. You be, you, I mean, it was crazy. I'm looking at her. And I'm going to be honest with you. I said, I don't talk to you like that. What's your problem? But I see she's trying to do something. She's trying to, I'm, I'm just trying to give me a fighter because you know if you're fighting each other, that's another charge, okay? So at this point, and I'm going to keep it real, the old Deanna would have just, I would have just knocked out, whatever. The woman of God said, I'll thank her. So I mean she 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 I'm she cussing. She took she, she took 100, 150. So I'm standing by the cell door and I'm looking at the guard and I'm thinking, okay, God, what you want me to do? He said, You know, you can't fight up in there, Deanna. They're already trying to put stuff on you that's not real. I said, Okay, what I do? He said, I'll think her. So I saw the guard and she just kept on going. So I start I shake I started shaking my head like this on purpose. Because you know when you shake your head and you get in an argument, people think that you're thinking something or you're trying something. So but but no, I, I'm shaking my head because I, I want you to keep saying what you say. I want you to be loud enough so this guard can hear you. So soon as I saw the guard coming to see what was going on because it was that loud, it was that it was crazy. So soon as the guard got by the door, yes I did, yes I did. Y'all gonna laugh, but I did it. I say, oh, guard, I'm so scared. Please move me. And then they moved me. And before I left out the room, I say, checkmate, Negro. Yeah, I looked at it. I say, checkmate. Don't play with me. I'm too versed. Too rehearsed. <laughs> you want to rumble? I know how to outthink you. She wanted me to fight her. What am I saying? Them people was not playing with me. They were trying to shut me down permanently. Y'all ain't ready for me. They may have used this, but they were trying to do that. I'm telling you, I saw it. So then the second cellmate, same thing happened. I'm like, and it was a, uh, <sighs> I got to watch what I say. It was a woman in there. She looked like a man. Everybody thought she was a man. She came to me while I was sitting down. She said, you know, they, they messing with you. She said, please don't do it. And I just listen, because you got to listen sometime. She said, they're, they're trying to get you to get your charge on, on yourself. And I'm like, and I already knew this. So I'm like, Lord, have mercy. Because the other one, she was banging on the thing all night long, acting crazy, just acting crazy. So at this point, half of me do want to, I could pull that girl out. That girl ain't nothing nice. She don't, she don't even get to come out and play. Because uh, everybody, everybody knew who I was in the past. Trust me. She was that girl. She said, don't, but can't let her come out because then they win. So all night long for two days, I didn't sleep. So we had, they have hay count at five o'clock in the morning. So now she acting like she sleep. And I'm going to be real with y'all what I say. I said, oh, uh, come out this. I get loud. I got loud. I can't lie to y'all because I knew what I was doing. Chess is it's chess. I said, no, uh-uh, come out that cell. You've you been up all night keeping me up, playing, acting crazy. I said, come out that cell. Don't like it. And so then the guard, you know, that's me. what's going on. I said, she is what's going on. I told y'all about her. And that's when they moved me by myself. I had to act a fool. Yes, I did. The Bible said, be angry, but sin not. I didn't sin. But I let them know a little something, something. Jacob Banks got a song, I'll give you that monster you've been wanting. I play it, but I, I don't ever want to live it. Because you don't want her for real. Heck, I don't even want her to come out. <laughs> I had to literally tell somebody, I will not always save. <laughs> play crazy if you want. I don't ever want to be forced to have to defend myself if somebody hit me. And I did say that. I'm not going to just do anything. But if I'm forced to defend myself, somebody in trouble. 
Don't let the age fool you. Am I too real for y'all? It is what it is. So, anywho, let's get back to the subject at hand. I realized these people weren't playing with me. These two girls just disappeared all of a sudden. Wasn't even in the cell no more. So then the last one was a white girl. They didn't put in the cell with me. They put it on side of me. Got up 5 o'clock in the morning. She said, good morning. And I'm looking at her like, here we go. And she kept trying to force herself on me, force herself to talk to me. For so finally I say, I say, stop playing with me. <laughs> what do you mean, stop playing with me? You're forcing. I've already said hi. We're not friends. We don't, I don't need to talk to you. Stop playing with me. The day before I left, she disappeared. Some of y'all gonna catch what I'm saying. Some of you, woo, gonna go over your head. Let me tell you something. This was not just planned. This was orchestrated systematically. And I guess when I realized what really happened, then I also realized where God need me at. You guys, it was it's not just an assignment against me. It was a heavy one. It's an assignment against every true child of God. They're not playing. We are a threat to them. And I don't mean in a violent time way. The Spirit of God will cut anything in anybody. The Spirit of God will stop anything in anybody. So I just started fasting every day. Every day to, to actually 6 o'clock. Just fast, fast, fast. Sometimes I didn't eat. You know, I was giving away them trays, you know, because some people were really hungry in there. So my, my thing was to just minister and to listen and look and pray and train. Man, I was getting up at 5 o'clock. I was, I was doing exercise three times a day. The girl that I was with, the one that I really like, she's a very nice girl, and she's going to prison. I have to write her. I will. I mean, she was just amazing. I love that young lady. <laughs> she saw me. She said, "You gonna exercise like that while I'm sleeping?" I said, "Yes, ma'am." <laughs> it was so funny because you know, the cell like that, and I'm she's sleeping. I'm going, uh, uh, uh. you know what I'm saying? It was crazy. It was crazy. But um, anywho, what God had been trying to get me to do exercise get in shape i'm gonna keep it i'm talking about to the 10th power because if people don't know in college i used to be a aerobic instructor and i used to body build i know how to contour my body i know how to do what i have to do i bet y'all doing it now though <laughs> so and again it's not even just about looking good i hear god saying thus said the lord y'all better get in shape y'all better be prepared mentally physically emotionally spiritually they're here. They're not coming. They're here. Who are they? You're going to find out in a minute because we're behind time. The church is behind time. We've been so busy trying to build buildings instead of building the people. We've been trying to get money instead of get faith and power of the Holy Ghost. There's going to be a time when they're going to throw the money in the street. It's not even going to be worth anything. Almost that time not, truth be told. <laughs> Bitcoin and all that other stuff coming. Anywho, um, I'm, I'm doing a live. I'm almost finished. Okay? So, anyway, um, I'm doing a live. I'm almost finished. So, I guess to end this like this, I'm calling a fast for Friday. We're starting on Friday. I would have started today, but I know some of y'all didn't already ate and whatever. Friday, we're going to start a fast, okay? And... We, got, we just got to fast. Our position right now is to fast and pray like never before. And I have to say it this way. I have to say it this way. And the crazy part is God had been preparing me. Let me tell y'all something. Even that day it happened, y'all, when I got arrested. Because I didn't know. I went and met the cops. Oblivious. I went and met them. And when I was behind that car, I told them, I said, you ain't got a lot to me. I said, I don't went and met you. I ain't never ran from nothing. Even when I did do stuff. You didn't hear what I just said. But I got to say this. And I was saying this before I, all that stuff happened. Trust no one. They ain't ready for me, Lord. Trust no one but God and who God tell you to trust. I'm saying that for a reason. I'll put it in the book. I ain't going to put it out here. I got to say this. I'll say this. I'll say this. This is kind of crazy. I'm getting. I'm telling y'all now, because I'm gonna put this on a book in the book. But this is crazy. 
They tried to put me in a mental home, y'all. Y'all understand what I'm saying? You can get out here now if you go straight to the mental home. Uh, you must be crazy. Y'all didn't do this when I was on drugs 20, 30 years ago. Y'all better quit playing with me. Did y'all hear what I just said, what they tried to do? I had to take a mental evaluation. I passed, of course, right? That wasn't funny to me. I'm trying to tell you the enemy is after us in every capacity. And if you think it's a game, keep playing. Keep playing. Keep playing, said the Lord. Psh, you think they playing? You think they playing? I couldn't believe the things were being happened, what that was happening to me. And I have to be honest with you. At one point, I got weakened. I almost just let everything happen. I was just like, and God said, Deanna, fight. I said, God, isn't... and he said, remember Joseph. Eight years for a lie. Eight years. And he didn't do nothing either. I said, yeah, it was, it's character building. He said, I'm building you up. I'll never let people overtake you, especially if you didn't do anything. He said, but I've allowed this for a reason. So get out of why and what you're feeling and look. And that's what I started doing. I started looking inside and outside. And then he exposed the true intents of people. I didn't know people hated me that much, even in my own family. I didn't know. I didn't know. I know now. The things they were saying to me were so hurtful. This must have been in your heart. But I forgive you. This was one of the hardest tests I've ever endured in my life, if not the hardest. And I thought I wasn't going to make it. But the more I fast, the more I pray, God said, I love you, Deanna. I'm with you, Deanna. And I ain't going to lie, I got mad. I said, God, but you, you ain't had to allow this. He said, yes, I did. Because I want you to see how real it is. Hallelujah. He said, I want you to see how real it is and what's in you and how I'm with you. Hallelujah. He said, I'm with you, girl. I love you. I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. In here, out there, even when you die. And that's when I really surrendered. I said, God, I love you. Thank you. I started thinking. Now, how you go from why to thinking, I don't know. It must be the spirit of God. And I forgive anyone that had a hand to do. Because this was a major plot. This wasn't no one or two, three people. When I went to have that mental evaluation, Usually doctors say, well, how are you doing? What's going on? The doctor pulled up a chase. It what's going on? Because we ain't never seen it done like this. Usually when a person come in for a mental evaluation, they've done something, harm before somebody or themselves. And I, I showed him some things in my phone. He said, I'll have you out of here in an hour. They're supposed to hold you 72 hours. Y'all ain't ready for me. Then the nurse came in. I've never seen it happen like this in 30 years. Y'all ain't ready for me. Y'all ain't ready for me. Y'all ain't ready for me. I don't know who was all part of this plot and plan, but y'all, it was on a grand scale. I felt like Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, Deanna X. Yeah, I cried. It was a lot of tears because I couldn't believe it. I said, Lord, they didn't do that when I was doing bad stuff. Hello. I didn't go through this when I was, when I was, you know, what I did, how I did, what I did 30 years ago. I didn't go through this then. It was just like, woo, you did it. Okay. So every time this was like a crushing, they were trying to break me on a level I've never seen before. So I had to fast. I had to pray. And believe it or not, he made me exercise. He said, because it's going to take away the stress. It's going to take away the anger. It's going to take away this. It's going to take away that. And then I, I had to pray, don't let me hate nobody. Because they're trying to take my life. Don't let me hate nobody. Don't let me, don't let me be bitter. I had to pray for the same ones that were doing it. And I did. And I'm going to tell you this what God said. He said, you're angry now, but you're going to be praying for it later. Because you know, you know, you know, no one gets away with anything. And so with that being said, I didn't know God was going to make me say all that. I thought I was talking about just affairs. <laughs> yeah, y'all. I think that was the hardest test I ever had to face. I mean, I had cancer and Crohn's disease, and I beat that. And I, I ain't never. This was this was that gully moment. I, oh man, this was like do or die, do or die, do or die. <laughs> you know, I always used to say, "Throw me in the jungle, I'm coming out." Well, Prophetess Deanna was in that jungle. Now, y'all go check on them lion, tigers, and bears. Oh, my. Go check on them. Go check on them. 
Mm-hmm, go check on them. <laughs> so, it's going to be all right, though. You just got to, in this hour, you better get close to God. And I told people up in there, and I'm telling y'all, me and guards had these conversations, too. Some of them, someone was nice, some of them was like, whoo, mean, just mean for nothing. But I will say this. Y'all better get close to God. Stop playing. Stop playing. Stop playing. Y'all think I'm playing if you want. Stop playing. Too many people playing in this hour. You don't see it's high time. And when this stuff going to happen, like I say, I'm going to bring that vision back. How people just started blowing their brains because they could not take what was happening. Okay, let me tell you what martial law is. You're not going to own your house. Them people can come in until you get the heck up out of that house. You own nothing. It's under dictatorship. The first thing, they want them guns. That's why all this is happening. Again, my heart goes out to the families that have lost. This is not just happening. I told y'all this years ago, these are hits. What is a hit? What do you think it is? The enemy has constructed this and planned this for many years. Many, many years. And anyone can get it that gets in their way. They kill their own. Who are we? Y'all better understand how serious this is. And their number one thing is to have fear. And I can be very transparent to say we all had, I got to say had now, there was a little fear that, that lingers in all of us that must be pushed away. When this happened, man, I ain't scared of nothing. Nobody don't care. What we doing? Bring it. After this, I guess that was that last thing of fear had to get out of me, truth be told. Yeah, it's real like that, man. Y'all y'all better understand what I'm just saying. Stop being scared. Stop being scared. Some of y'all won't even get into your calling all the way because, yeah, they're going to come after you. Yeah, you're going to be on a um on a list, a red flag list like I am. Yes, you're going to. You might go through what I just went through. Everybody. So so now you're not gonna say what does say the Lord. So you you're not gonna stand up for righteousness. So 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 you so you gonna remember. Stand now, stand later. You are gonna do both anyway. What am I saying? When judgment comes, you are gonna have to stand before your Maker, and He's gonna ask you, "Did you do what I've asked you to do?" Because most people don't want to do it. They, I'm gonna tell you what most people want to do. I'm just being real with you. They they, they, they want to have fun and they want to feel good and they want to do what they want to do until it happened. And then they want to cry, God, why, God, why, God, why? And a lot of people are doing that. A lot of people are playing games, mind games. A lot of people are playing games, games. What's games, games? You know, acting like they love you when they don't, acting like they care when they don't. Just, just, don't play the games with me. You know what I'm saying. You see right through that. Sometimes don't say nothing. In this season... I need everybody to meditate on James 1.19. Be my beloved. Be quick to hear. E even Monique, that was her name. That's all I could tell y'all. I, I, I love that girl. I'm telling you. That girl was 37 years old. And she, she made an imprint on my life. Even though she's going through what she's going through, she can ready to go to prison. That young lady, God going to use that girl. God going to use that girl. She say, around here, listen. And I'm looking at her like, but God said, listen to her. And that's what saved me from some things, too, because I listened. You know, some who want to talk, no, listen. Listen. So it says, my beloved, be quick to hear, slow to speak. I've learned how to be slower. Sometimes God will make you just shut up completely. Shut up. You ain't got to speak your mind. I'm telling y'all what time it is. And be slow to wrath. Don't do what they do. It took everything in me. Not to knock somebody out in there. I'm going to be real with you. Because the old I done just did it. Say what you want about me. The new prophetess. Holy Spirit, activate. Holy Spirit, activate. <laughs> That's all I can say. So God bless you. God keep you. I pray that y'all understand everything I just said. Go back and go back and listen to this. Because it's real like that. This is not a game. And when they do what they do, everybody going to be looking crazy. The ones that didn't believe, the ones that still just want to keep playing that game with God and themselves. So until then, God keep you. God bless you. 
and you know what time it is. This is Prophetess Deanna Dixon. Roll our soldiers, for that is truly who we are. God bless.